So it's really my pleasure to be here and uh, I will um, share with you some of the data I recently uh, got from uh, um, the new lab I'm working in. And uh, basically, uh, I will describe uh, the um, use of uh, this new animal model that we call uh, Metalook, uh, that uh, is uh, uh, a very useful model for tracking uh, cell proliferation in vivo. So, uh, some of the data I will show you has been presented in recently on in uh, molecular uh, biology of the cells. Uh, getting uh, the cover, and so we are. We were uh, very excited about that, and I will try to convey some of this exci excitement about this uh, animal model. So I'm pretty sure you uh, are all familiar with uh, um, bioluminescence imaging. Uh, so uh, basically, what uh, um, this technique uh, uh, can uh, provide is. Uh, um, direct uh, uh, tracking of uh, um, luminescence uh, through a, a very sensitive uh, uh, camera uh, oops, that uh, um, records and uh, uh, quantify the um, uh, luminescence. The, the reaction that takes place uh, uh, is exactly the same that uh, is, uh, take pla takes place in a firefly uh, luciferase. Uh, the, in, uh, in the far fly, where the um, uh, luciferase is able to uh, um, convey this reaction and in presence of uh, uh, energy, that means ATP, uh, you got uh, basically uh, emission of light that uh, can be detected by a very sensitive camera. So uh, the goal of the, the project was uh, uh, to track uh, in vivo uh, cell proliferation by uh, bioluminescence imaging. So uh, there are um, many papers describing the role of the um, transcription factor NFY, nuclear factor Y, uh, which plays a pivotal role in, uh, in cell proliferation. So the idea was uh, uh, to um, use NFY, uh, an NFY dependent promoter, um, to which uh, put under the con uh, in which luciferase was under the control of NFY activity, and by that uh, um, generating an animal model to uh, for uh, uh, bioluminescence imaging technology. So. Uh, this is the expression cassette in which, uh, as I told you, uh, luciferase is under the control of the uh, cycling B2 promoter, which is uh, uh, dependent of uh, NFY activity. And uh, of course, this uh, cassette was put, uh, were isolated by two insulator, and then we generated the, the, um, the animal model in which uh, uh, the expression of luciferase is under the control of this uh, uh, promoter. So we generate the mouse, and uh, this is the image of uh, a mouse embryo at uh, 19 uh, days. And uh, uh, on, the left, uh, you can, uh, on the left, you can see uh, the um, positive animal, the metalook, and here a uh, uh, negative litter mate. And uh, uh, here on the, on the bottom, uh, you can see the relative uh, um, emission. Actually, this is uh, um, the um, luciferase activity in uh, uh, homogenate of different tissue. And uh, at the, this stage, there is a high expression in heart, in developing heart, and, uh, um, and in uh, the bone marrow, in which you can see in the, in the femur. This is also true on the, um, on the mouse, not only on the embryo. So uh, let's go uh, from here to the dissected organs. As you can see, uh, the strongest signal you have it is from the, the, um, the bones. So you have uh, the sternum here and the bone the back, on the back of the animal, and also on the, on the limbs. So you got the femurs. And you have also a pretty strong signal on the, on the spleen. And this is exactly what, what you can see 
in the dissected organ. So you have a, a very nice strong signal in the sternum as well as the, in the femur and uh, uh, a high signal in, um, in the spleen. And uh, on the other end, you have uh, um, no signal at all in uh, quiescent organs in which uh, um, no active uh, um, uh, proliferation takes place, like in the, in the muscle, liver, uh, in the brain, and so on. Uh, what you can see actually here is the there are some very strong positive signal where the, the animal use uh, the, the, the paws to, to run uh, across uh, the, the, the cage. So you have a very strong signal actually in, uh, in, the, in the fingers of the animals and also in, uh, in the teeth because those are rodents and that the, the ray, there is continuous growth of the, the teeth of the animals. So it's a, a very um, fascinating because you can actually see uh, what's going on um, in the, the live animal. Those animals uh, are just, uh, um, uh, I mean, they are alive. And so you can take uh, the same, uh, you can repeat the procedure as long as you want. Um, here again are uh, the confirmatory data on, uh, on uh, the tissues, uh, the luciferase activity in uh, uh, basically this matches what you have seen uh, uh, by the in vivo machine and then you can check the luciferase activity. Again, uh, there is a, a very high level of uh, uh, luciferase activity in bone marrow and femur and sternum and uh, as well as uh, for the male animal in, uh, in the testes and uh, uh, very low levels of uh, uh, activity in brain, liver uh, and um, other tissue you can actually see. So uh, we checked that actually the, um, the expression, the signal that we uh, see is actually due to um, NFY dependent uh, activity. So we generated an adenoridal vector uh, expressing a dominant negative form of uh, NFY. And when we inject uh, um, the animals uh, with uh, the dominant negative form of the NFY, the signal basically um, was uh, reduced during, uh, during time and uh, while an uh, animal injected with the same amount on a denoviral vector expressing a, a GFP uh, did not uh, alter the expression of the, uh, the signal dependent uh, by uh, NFY activity of uh, look. And uh, this is again the uh, quantification of the uh, data you have seen in the previous image. So uh, basically there is a significant drop of uh, the uh, luciferase activity in the animal injected by the dominant negative form of the, um, of the NFY. Next, uh, we wanted to examine uh, with a different technique if uh, uh, the signal we got uh, by um, bioluminescence imaging. So we uh, took advantage of uh, this uh, molecule that is uh, 18F uh, FLT that is a tracer uh, that is use useful for uh, um, position em emission uh, tomography. And uh, um, basically what uh, we saw was uh, a perfect match uh, between the, the signal in, uh, observed in um, luminescence imaging here on the right, and uh, the signal we got from the uh, PET uh, imaging. It was true for the vertebral column. Again, here the signal, the strong signal that you got in this white part of the hind limb of the animal, that is actually the one you got uh, uh, by BLE imaging, BLI imaging, and again uh, uh, in the, in the, the teeth of the, the animal, while uh, here you can see that the brain, which is negative, it, both uh, uh, for PT and BLI, 
and so on. So uh, next, uh, we asked if it's possible uh, to uh, visualize uh, Lucifer's expression upon the induction of proliferation. What I've seen so far is just uh, um, proliferation that takes take place in the physiological uh, status. So, so what happens if we induce uh, uh, proliferation? So what we first did was to isolate uh, um, cells from, uh, from these mice and see uh, if we got some uh, luciferase activity inducing uh, them uh, to proliferate. We first did uh, the experiment with, with uh, meth that are um, fibroblasts, basically. So in proliferating meth, uh, uh, there is a very strong signal in, uh, of uh, look expression, while if you um, put the same cells in, uh, in a medium that block uh, the cells in, uh, in the G1 phase, G0, G1 phase, you will see uh, a very dramatic drop in uh, luciferase activity. This is also true for uh, a cell isolated from the muscle. So basically there are satellite cells that uh, if uh, um, they are um, grown in medium that uh, allow them to proliferate, um, you have a, a signal of uh, a luciferase activity, uh, BRDU positive signal. While if you induce them to differentiate into uh, myotubes, you got a nice expression of a myosin heavy chain. This is a marker of, uh, uh, my, uh, of myotubes. But on the other end, uh, you don't have uh, BRDU expression uh, and you don't have uh, luciferase expression. So basically, uh, if you induce proliferation of these cells, you got a signal, a look signal. If you stop them, you, you don't. What happened in the animal? So uh, basically, uh, what we did uh, is try different uh, uh, technique of uh, injury on these animals and see uh, what uh, uh, happened. So the first uh, uh, thing we did is just an uh, uh, injury in the tibialis anterior of the, of the mouse with uh, uh, it's a freeze injury. And uh, you can see that uh, in animals that uh, underwent to um, an injury, after f uh, just a, uh, one day, you got a very strong signal in, uh, in, the, pre in the presence of, of uh, injury when you don't have uh, any significant uh, expression in the sham uh, operated animal. At day three, you got uh, a very strong uh, um, signal um, that is basically part due to the some, something is going on in uh, the regenerating muscle, but uh, most of it is uh, um, due to uh, a presence of inflammatory cells that uh, uh, colonize the, the regenerating muscle. And uh, this is also uh, present in uh, the sham operated animal uh, in which you expose the, the, the muscle but uh, did not perform the injury, but is not present in uh, the untreated animal. Uh, this is again another kind of uh, uh, injury uh, we perform uh, on the hind limb of, uh, of mice, or some mice. Uh, so uh, here uh, you, we perform a, a, an hind limb ischemia by a ligation of the ligation of the, uh, of the femoral artery, and. Uh, at day one, you can see that uh, uh, the signal is reduced uh, compared to the controllateral uh, um, uh, hind limb, in which you have a very strong signal uh, from the, the, the femur. But uh, um, the situation changed at uh, different uh, stages of after the hind limb ischemia in which uh, there is uh, an increase uh, uh, superiority expression in the muscle of the uh, hind limb uh, that was uh, injured. And uh, what you can see here is uh, the luciferase activity in the isolated uh, muscles, in which you can see that uh, in the um, muscle isolated from uh, ischemic uh, animals, you have uh, a stronger signal uh, that decreases uh, upon time. 
again, uh, we uh, use these animals also to track uh, uh, proliferation after wound dealing that was performed with a biopsy punch here uh, on the back of the, of the animal. Uh, this is the, the spine, the, the, the signal due to the, um, the vertebral column of the animal. And uh, this is the, the punch, the, the wound dealing. So uh, just uh, watching the wound dealing, you can see that over time, uh, again, there is a, a higher proliferation rate that we can detect uh, uh, by uh, BLI. And uh, again, uh, you can see that uh, it's not only uh, what uh, takes place at the site of injury here, but something takes place also in the, at the systemic level, in which uh, probably you have uh, uh, very um, high levels of uh, um, induction of uh, cells from uh, both, both the bone marrow and the spleen that are probably due to uh, higher uh, macrophage uh, uh, stimulation upon uh, injury. <clears throat> Another model we used was to uh, skin induction of, uh, induction of skin uh, papilloma that we uh, perform on the left ear of uh, a group of animals. And we use the other one as uh, uh, negative control. And again, uh, you can see that uh, uh, upon induction of uh, um, skin papilloma, there is a, a very high uh, level of lucifer receptivity that you can follow upon time. This, you have to consider that this is the same animal uh, in which the analysis uh, take place uh, over and over uh, again uh, in a different time point. So you can actually visualize the progression of uh, uh, the uh, papilloma formation. On the other hand, we wanted to, to see also if uh, uh, luciferase expression is uh, reduced in uh, presence of inhibition of proliferation. So um, we did uh, um, basically uh, two experiments, one using the uh, five uh, uh, fluorouracil uh, treatment, which is known uh, to uh, decrease uh, proliferation in uh, um, bone marrow. And uh, again, this is the, the same animal uh, over time. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the level of uh, um, proliferation is reduced in uh, these animals. And uh, again, uh, the signal is uh, uh, going down. This is uh, uh, just a quantification of the uh, analysis of the um, spleen, uh, the signal uh, coming from the spleen. And uh, again, uh, also uh, a treatment uh, uh, which is uh, irradiation at uh, uh, five gray um, induce uh, um, a redu reduction of proliferation in the first days. And then again, the animal started to recover and uh, with a peak at uh, uh, 20 days after uh, the treatment and uh, the animal uh, recovered in about a month. So you can see that uh, this uh, irradiation, you have uh, a drop of proliferation and then again, the animal recovers and uh, the proliferation is back uh, um, Again, another um, kind of treatment that we uh, perform is uh, uh, induction of uh, liver injury that we perform with uh, carbon tetrachloride injury uh, um, by administration of these uh, hepatotoxics in uh, a group of animals. And again, uh, at um, different time points, we can see that the liver that is uh, basically quiescent uh, and then uh, uh, there is no signal associated with this organ um, was increased and uh, um, then the, um, you can follow the, the again uh, the expression in the uh, liver homogenate. But on the other hand, uh, uh, you can use, use a um, 
um, monocrotalin, that is a, another drug that um, promotes inhibition of regeneration of the liver. And by, uh, okay, on, on the top you see what happened in the presence of the hepatotoxic only, so there is uh, the, the liver damage. But if you use uh, the, the same hepatotoxic in presence of this drug that uh, um, reduced the level of regeneration of uh, hepatocytes, you can see that uh, even in presence of an hepatic uh, damage, you don't have a signal associated with uh, proliferation of the endogenous cells. Again, um, this uh, uh, signal is actually correlated with NFY activity because in presence of, uh, again, uh, injection, intratail injection, administration of an adenorhylar vector expressing uh, the um, wild type form and NFY, the, the signal in the liver is present, while if you use a dominant negative form, uh, the uh, signal in the liver is lost. And then what you can see in uh, different ways of analysis, both in vivo, both ex vivo, and then on uh, a liver homogenates. Uh, and basically, the, it's uh, the same uh, um, taken away message. So that uh, this, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, this uh, um, expression of luciferase is actually correlated with uh, uh, NFY expression. Oh, I guess, no, this is, uh, we, we did this kind of experiment because we were also involved in a project in which uh, uh, we injected uh, some uh, um, cells that uh, has been shown uh, to uh, promote uh, uh, liver regeneration and they are able to engraft in the, in the liver uh, that uh, are uh, actually isolated from uh, adipose tissue. So in adipose tissue there, are presence on, there is the presence of some mesenchymal cells that uh, are able to um, um, uh, transdifferentiate in uh, at least in vitro and uh, apparently also in vivo in hepatocyte like cells. So, but what happens when you did perform the, the cell transplant in the liver? Basically, uh, in, uh, in the liver, as it is uh, uh, in a quiescent uh, um, state, you don't have uh, uh, basically any uh, engraftment of the cells you administer because uh, uh, there is complete, uh, the, there is no need for uh, a supply of uh, endo exogenous cells. So um, to have uh, uh, an improvement in, in the graftment before the transplantation you have to perform a, a, some kind of uh, um, liver damage and, and you can perform this using hepatotoxic drugs. And uh, in this case, you uh, actually have uh, that uh, your transplanted cells uh, here depicted in green compete with the uh, regenerating cells from the, um, the organ of the re recipient animal. But if you can combine the two uh, drugs, so you have uh, to use uh, uh, some kind of patotroxic drug to uh, induce uh, damage but again, use the uh, second drug, the monocrotalin, to um, uh, reduce the level of uh, endogenous proliferation, you have uh, uh, a higher engraftment rate. This is uh, a possible strategy to increase uh, the engraftment rate uh, in, uh, in the liver. So uh, next, uh, I want to show you some uh, experimental data we perform uh, on the, uh, the metal look uh, mouse uh, um, in association with uh, hyperbilirubinemia. And that's why uh, I'm, I'm basically here, because uh, I know that we, here there is a, uh, several groups that have a strong experience on the hyperbilirubinemic uh, mice. <coughs> And on the other hand, uh, as uh, uh, Andres told you before, I was uh, uh, involved uh, previously in my career in uh, some uh, project uh, um, focused on uh, Krieger-Najjar syndrome. So I try to use this uh, Mitoluk mouse uh, for, uh, also for uh, uh, the analysis of the induction uh, of a proliferation after induction of uh, hyperbilirubinemia. 
So um, you can uh, uh, you know that uh, um, bilirubin, uh, if uh, um, in the presence of uh, uh, the mutation that uh, take place in cricket mature patients, there is an increase of uh, uh, unconjugated if it, uh, unconjugated bilirubin that uh, uh, if uh, left untreated goes uh, to the brain and uh, uh, give rise to uh, brain damage, basically. And uh, this is what happened in, uh, in untreated uh, cricket major patients. So, um, and this is actually um, a, pa a paper of uh, previously developed um, hypobilirubinic uh, mouse, in which you can actually see that uh, the position of bilirubin in the brain um, basically uh, turn uh, the, the brain yellow. But uh, <clears throat> on the other hand, this uh, is a very complex uh, um, uh, system in which uh, uh, the high level of uh, unconjugated bilirubin has a, a plethora of effects on different cells uh, in, the, in the brain region. So um, the result is uh, uh, brain damage. Uh, the input is uh, uh, unconjugated bilirubin, but what happened uh, basically in what takes place exactly is uh, um, very difficult to dissect. So uh, we uh, wanted to see if there is a, a model uh, in using this model, we can actually um, see uh, what's going on uh, in vivo and uh, basically uh, follow the same animal um, by time by time to see what happened at uh, the region of uh, the brain. So what you basically did is induce a uh, uh, high level of uh, bilirubin by uh, phenylhydrazine treatment. And what we saw was basically that uh, uh, in uh, untreated animal, you don't see, as I showed you before, any uh, significant signal in the region of the, of the, um, of the brain. But uh, uh, in the phenylhydrazine treated animals, uh, you can see a very nice spot uh, uh, in the region of, uh, of the brain. And again, an IR signal that you can detect uh, all over basically the mouse that is uh, probably due to um, higher uh, proliferation of uh, um, inflama inflammatory cells. Uh, this is what happened at uh, day one after the treatment. Again, uh, you can see the higher uh, systemic effect of uh, uh, the treatment of the drug. But again, you can see the specific uh, uh, spot uh, in, uh, in the region that is negative in the saline treated mice. And uh, basically, the, uh, on the dis dissecting organs, you can see the, uh, also a very nice uh, um, uh, proliferation in the lungs because it's known that uh, this kind of uh, drug also have uh, as an effect of uh, um, inducing fibrosis in the, in the, in the lungs. And uh, we next uh, perform also a direct uh, uh, bilirubin injection in uh, these mice. And again, uh, we can see a very strong uh, um, correlation of uh, uh, response in the whole animal because probably there is a high uh, inflammatory response uh, in uh, these animals, but uh, there is a, a specific uh, region in the brain uh, um, that actually turned out um, every time we inject the bilirubin in these animals. So uh, we didn't know anything about that. I mean, we uh, just saw uh, on the microscopic uh, level what was going on, that is, there is something uh, proliferating, something that is probably associated with uh, inf inflammation and something that uh, takes place in the, in the region of uh, uh, the mouse so brain. Uh, so um, there are several lines of evidence that elevated levels of 
bilirubin has uh, an effect in, on the um, vasculature, on the endothelial cells of, uh, uh, surrounding the, um, the brain. So uh, we wanted to see if, uh, um, again, this is uh, just a cartoon um, in which uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, unconjugated bilirubin here in, uh, in um, yellow uh, activates uh, a, a cascade of uh, um, events in which uh, uh, different uh, cells uh, uh, take part. And um, so uh, we wanted to see if uh, uh, modulating the um, blood uh, brain barrier, we were able to uh, see any uh, reduction or augmentation of the signal associated with this treatment. So we use uh, a manitol that is, in due, uh, that is known to um, reduce uh, intracranial pressure and basically uh, leading to uh, blood, blood blood barrier disruption. And on the other hand, we use a uh, uh, um, chemotherapy drug that is uh, basically a, a monoclonal antibody uh, against uh, VEGF that is known to um, uh, stabilize uh, the blood barrier factor, blood barrier barrier. And again, uh, you can see here that in control animals that re receive just the, the, the saline, you don't see anything uh, going on, uh, particularly uh, dramatic in the, in the region of the brain. While in the bilirubin treated animal, uh, already after five hours uh, of the injection, you can see there is uh, a signal associated in the, on the brain region as well as uh, uh, quite strong uh, um, systemic uh, effect. In conjunction of uh, bilirubin administration with uh, manitol administration, uh, the signal was even stronger, uh, meaning that, uh, that actual uh, disruption of the um, blood brain uh, barrier uh, has an effect on this uh, um, proliferation we associate with the, the um, treatment. On the other hand, if uh, uh, we treated the pre-treated the animal with uh, um, this uh, antibody, monoclonal antibody, we see that uh, the animal uh, um, basically has no uh, significant uh, um, damage uh, in the short time period. And here is the quantification of the, the, um, the levels uh, of uh, luciferase at the brain region, uh, the brain. I mean, this region we associate with the, the, crime, the, the, the brain. So you can see that uh, in, with the treatment of uh, bilirubin alone, we have, as I shown you before, an increase in uh, the luciferase uh, signal. In the presence of bilirubin plus uh, uh, the manitol, the signal was even stronger. The um, antibody alone, as well as the manitol alone, uh, have uh, no effect, basically, the two gray lines. And uh, the association of uh, bilirubin with uh, this uh, avestin, this uh, bevacizumab uh, treatment, uh, uh, basically um, the level of uh, luciferase activity uh, dropped to background level. Um, and this is pretty much uh, uh, what uh, I have to um, share with you today. Basically, the, the conclusion is that we have developed this uh, mouse in which the expression of luciferase is uh, uh, associated with uh, uh, the physiological and also with the pathological cell proliferation. This is, uh, um, we believe, a very useful uh, animal uh, to be used in different uh, experimental conditions. And um, this is pretty much it, and I uh, want to share with you also the, the, the acknowledgement, acknowledgements of the, um, the collaboration uh, that uh, uh, help us uh, in developing this mouse and in use it, in use this mouse also in uh, different experimental conditions. Uh, thank you.
for the attention.